Hello and welcome to another Thought of the Day from New Milton Evangelical Free Church. Let's pray as we come to God's Word. Our gracious Father, we thank you for speaking to us through this marvellous Word of yours, which you have caused to be written for our instruction, our edification, our exhortation and encouragement. We thank you that it all speaks to us of our new life in Christ, the abundant life he came to give us and is now provided for us by your spirit in our hearts. So we pray that you will lift our hearts this morning to his glory so that we might sing his praises and know his goodness. In the name of Jesus we pray. Amen. So we're moving into Genesis chapter 13 and we're going to read the whole of that chapter together. So Abraham went up from Egypt to the Negev with his wife and everything he had, and Lot went with him. Abraham had become very wealthy in livestock and in silver and gold. From the Negev he went from place to place until he came to Bethel, to the place between Bethel and Ai where his tent had been earlier and where he had first built an altar. There Abraham called on the name of the Lord. Now Lot, who was moving about with Abraham, also had flocks and herds and tents, but the land could not support them while they stayed together, for their possessions were so great that they were not able to stay together, and quarrelling arose between Abraham's herdsmen and Lot's. The Canaanites and Perizzites were also living in the land at that time. So Abraham said to Lot, Let's not have any quarrelling between you and me, or between your herdsmen and mine, for we are close relatives. It's not the whole land before you. Let's part company. If you go to the left, I'll go to the right. If you go to the right, I'll go to the left. Lot looked around and saw that the whole plain of the Jordan towards Zoar was well watered, like the garden of the Lord, like the land of Egypt. This was before the Lord destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah. So Lot chose for himself the whole plain of the Jordan and set out towards the east. The two men parted company. Abraham lived in the land of Canaan, while Lot lived among the cities of the plain and pitched his tents near Sodom. Now the people of Sodom were wicked and were sinning greatly against the Lord. The Lord said to Abraham, after Lot had parted from him, Look around from where you are, to the north and the south, to the east and the west, all the land that you see I will give to you and your offspring forever. I will make your offspring like the dust of the earth, so that if anyone could count the dust, then your offspring could be counted. Go, walk through the length and breadth of the land, for I am giving it to you. So Abraham went to live near the great trees of Mamre, uh, uh, <coughs> at Hebron, where he pitched his tents, and there he built an altar to the Lord. So our theme for today is the generosity of God. And we can see that indeed God has been generous to Abraham, even before this. Uh, if you cast your eyes back to look at uh, chapter 12, when he comes from Haran at God's bidding to set out for Canaan, uh, God says to him, take everything that you possess, and his possessions were no mean small amount. So he's already wealthy when he even comes into Canaan. And then when he goes down to Egypt, he's even had more added to his wealth, where uh, the Pharaoh in Egypt gives him uh, goods, cattle, uh, livestock, uh, servants, camels even, uh, in uh, honour of his so-called sister who is in fact his wife so when he comes back Abraham comes back uh, and we're told in verse 2 Abraham had become very wealthy in livestock and in silver and gold so he's got accumulated fortunes probably what we would count as two or three fortunes uh, attested and uh, attributed to his name so God indeed has been generous to him and we need to know, of course, that the world and the earth is the Lord's and the fullness and everything is in it that is belonging to God. And we need to know as believers in Christ that if God means you to be wealthy, you will be wealthy. 
And if he doesn't mean you to be wealthy, then I'm afraid that's his uh, purpose for you. And there is some kind of reason for that. So we can't be like the guy in Fiddler on the Roof crying to God, if I were a rich man, would it spoil some vast eternal plan if I was a rich man? We must trust God's purpose for us and the amount he chooses to give us. And if he doesn't give us much, it's not because God is not generous. It's because his purpose for us is elsewhere. But even the wealthiest of men who have benefited from the generosity of God can go astray. So let me ask this this morning. Is God still generous when faith falters? We've seen, haven't we, that what Abraham did in this famine was to go down to Egypt and misrepresent his God by telling lies to Pharaoh. Instead of trusting God for his welfare, he manoeuvres and manipulates and devises stories and tales to protect himself so that his life will not be in danger as he considers it to be. And he gets his wife to participate in that. But at the beginning of this chapter, we read something else. Abraham now, or Abraham as he is called then, retraces his steps. He comes back to the Negev, and from Negev he goes from place to place until he eventually comes to Bethel, to the place where originally he has built an altar. And there he calls again on the name of the Lord. Isn't it significant that all of the time that he is in Egypt, we are not told he called on the name of the Lord. So what do you do when your faith takes a backward step? What do you do when you fail God? Is God's benevolence to you, his grace and his mercy, somehow dependent on your track record? Is it earned by the way that you behave as a Christian? And we have to say from our knowledge of the gospel, the free grace gospel, that brought salvation to us in the name of a saviour who died for us, not because of what we had done, but because of his love and his mercy to us. We have to say, nothing we have or do earns God's favour. And God is determined to do good to us, even when we are not good to him. So your mistakes and failures don't devastate God. Neither do they disrupt his purposes. What do you do then if you've failed him? Where do you go if you're aware that you have not lived up to his expectations for you? Well, here's the thing. You must find the altar that you first built. Go back to the place in your heart where you last knew him, where you enjoyed fellowship with him. Where is that place? Where is our altar? Well, there's only one. It's the place of sacrifice. It's the place of submission. It's the place of the cross. Where do you bring the sin of your failure? Where do you bring all that you have done that has wronged God, even in the face of his grace? You bring it to the cross. If for one minute you were to seek to pay for the penalty of the sin you have incurred, you would be destroyed for eternity. There's only one place where God deals with sin. It's at the cross of his son, where Jesus gave his life for you so that you could be forgiven. So my brother or sister in Christ this morning, if you're feeling downcast, if you're feeling less than you should be, if you know you've done things, said things, thought things that have dishonored your living savior, come to the cross with me this morning and lay that burden down. Come to the place where you know him in your heart and speak to him for he cares for you still and his generosity is unimpaired. He gives you mercy and grace in abundance in according with the riches that he has for you in Christ, not in accordance with your earnings or your record. Let's pray. Our gracious Lord, how we praise you for your grace. Lord Jesus, we thank you for your death, for the sacrifice of the lamb, the eternal blemishless lamb to take away the sin of the world. And even now, day by day, as we walk with you, it takes away our sin. 
So help us to renew our fellowship with you, to come again to the place where we know we speak to you and you speak to us and help us to hear your voice and to lift up our hearts, lift up our eyes, lift up our feet so that we might walk in your service once more. Love your people and give glory to Jesus. Amen.